Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome back to The Hive. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at this Nano Leaf Essentials LED light strip. As always, we'll take a look around the box, we'll take it out of the box and get it set up. Now, there's still no native Home Assistant integration for this light strip or the Nano Leaf Essentials light bulb that I reviewed previously. So, we'll just be taking a look at the native Nano Leaf app and the HomeKit integration. So, while I roll the intro, take a moment to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified when I release new videos each week. And if you'd like to support the channel, check out my affiliate links or my buy me a coffee link in the video description down below. Now let's get started. So I spoke about the Nano Leaf Essentials light bulb previously. At the same time that I bought that bulb, I also picked up this Nano Leaf light strip two meter starter kit for $97 at Bunnings. Now it's also worth mentioning that in addition to these two meter kits, there are one meter expansion kits available that just include the light strip and those are $31 available from Bunnings. Now, I've been particularly impressed with Nanoleaf lighting accessories before, so I've got particularly high hopes for this LED strip. This LED strip does 16 million colors and white to warm white as well, but it does remain to be seen whether or not this is going to be addressable or if those colors are going to be across the whole strip. Now, like the Nanoleaf bulb, this light strip connects using thread. The new smart home standard designed to simplify the smart home. I am working on a full introduction to thread video, so be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified when that video comes out. Now let's take a look around the box and on the front we see that we've got the light strip starter kit and that it's two meters. It does 16 plus million colors, 100 to 240 volts at 50 to 60 hertz and it works with HomeKit out of the box. On this side, there's not really much to talk about except that we do see uh, the control box that's inside here as well. And we'll take a look at the controller soon. On the back, we've got 16 million plus colors with uh, vibrant colors or tunable white light. We've got circadian lighting to automatically adjust color temperature throughout the day. And the asterisk there just denotes that there's some requirements required for that to work with the Apple HomeKit integration. It is thread enabled for improved reliability with a compatible border router. And we can do custom schedules to wake up naturally to sunrise colors. Uh, now on the last side here, we've got that it also works with Google. Uh, it's built on thread and it has Bluetooth as well. And some more specs here, we've got 2200 lumens of brightness uh, for the luminous flux there, uh, one to 100% dimming and 25,000 hours of lifespan. It is rated at 22 watts uh, with standby power of less than 0.3 watts, an input rating of 100 to 240 volts at 50 to 60 hertz again. Luminous flux uh, is more than 2,000 lumens plus or minus 10% at 2,700 to 6,500 K. We have the dimming range of 1 to 100% with a resolution of 0.1%. Uh, and dimming with the controller, voice or app, and the recommended maximum length per controller is 10 meters. Uh, now, uh, we'll take a very quick look on the bottom. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that on camera. Uh, it does say that it's uh, compatible with Apple's adaptive lighting, so that uh, allows the Apple HomeKit app to control that circadian lighting that we spoke about before where the warm white comes on during the 
evening hours uh, and we've got the cool white during the day. Uh, that function does require a HomePod with iOS 14 or later, an Apple TV with tvOS 14 or later, or an iPad with iPadOS 14 or later set up as the Home Hub. Schedules in the NanoLeaf app are only available over the Thread protocol and HomeKit schedules do require a Home Hub and Google schedules require a compatible Google Home device. So that's the box and let's get this thing out of the box to take a look at the light strip itself. Now, similar to the light bulb, we've got uh, an outer sleeve that we need to unhook on the back here and then we can slip off the outer sleeve. Uh, and then we can open up the top of the box. Uh, and inside here, and I'll just do this on the other camera. Inside here, we have uh, a Nanoleaf card on top uh, and we've got the uh, HomeKit pairing code on the back here. And then we take that out and we've got the light strip itself, uh, pretty well packaged with Velcro ties around the light strip. And uh, the strip itself uh, is enclosed in this kind of uh, plasticky silicon. It's not fully waterproof, um, but it would uh, go a long way to making it uh, at least water resistant. Uh, we'll come back to the light strip in a second. Uh, we've got a quick start guide in the uh, box here. Uh, and then underneath we've got this uh, kind of cardboard origami, which if I pull that out, I might need to turn the box upside down to slide that out. Uh, we'll put that box over there and then we can unfold this origami. And inside here we've got an adapter for the Australian wall plug. Uh, we've got the wall unit itself uh, and we've also got uh, the controller here. Uh, so I'm just going to try and get uh, the uh, wall plug uh, set up here. I've got to try and get this in and then twist it on. Yeah, so um, there's this little latch mechanism here. You put this in and then uh, twist it uh, about 15 degrees to get it onto there. Uh, so if we take a closer look at the controller, uh, on the bottom we'll see that we have the uh, power inlet and that's just, uh, it looks like it's just a 2.1 millimeter uh, standard power jack. Uh, and in the top we have a connector uh, and it takes this connector here. It's kind of like a JTAG connector uh, that goes to the LED strip and that just kind of slips in there uh, and it comes out. Uh, there's four buttons, so we've got power, uh, a kind of right chevron arrow, a plus and a minus. Uh, and on the back, we've got our pairing code as well, and that's uh, NFC enabled. It's Nano Leaf Essentials light strip compatible only with the one meter or two meter light strips uh, and uh, some manufacturing details. 100 to 240 volts AC input at 50 to 60 hertz, 23 watts, uh, and some compliance information. On the power adapter, we've got LED driver, uh, the model number uh, 100 to 240 volts, 50 to 60 hertz, one amp max, output of 15 volts at two amps for a total of 30 watts, uh, and it's a constant voltage LED module, and then all of our compliance data here. Uh, there's some more info on the side uh, with the specs on Chinese there. Take a closer look at the LED strip. I'll just undo this Velcro here. That's a really nice quality Velcro. I'm gonna keep that uh, for some cable management. Now, in terms of the build quality here, this um, this is really well made. Um, there's heat shrink over the cable here to give it some strain relief and stop it from uh, pulling any of the connectors out of the plug here. Uh, and then uh, we've got this kind of plastic boot over the end of the LED strip. Uh, and if we look closely, uh, we've got each uh, LED appears to be a group of five LEDs. So uh, I'm guessing that's cool white, warm white, and then the RGB in the middle there. So there's six wires on the connector here. Um, so I'm guessing that these are not particularly clever LEDs. They're not gonna be SK6812s or um, WS2812s. These might be WS2812s, so I'm not too sure about that. Uh, and uh, if we unroll this a little bit more, um, that's also interesting. It's 3M VHB 
tape on the back of the unit. That's going to be very, very sticky. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven LED groups. And then we have uh, a scissor marking and a cut point here. Um, and those are soldered together. So you can cut these strips down to length. Uh, and according to the manual here, yeah, cut them at the uh, at those break points there. I'll be interested to see if these are addressable or not. Uh, so I'm going to plug in the controller to the LED strip uh, and I'll plug the power into the controller here as well. And then I'll plug the power adapter into power. Uh, and straight away we have the LED strip is on uh, in a kind of warmish white color that's pretty good, fairly bright. I, I wouldn't complain about that. Um, as a as a lighting effect at all that's that's quite nice okay so we've plugged it into power and we've got uh, light coming out of it here I will say that they feel quite warm the, the LED strip is getting quite warm I'm not going to worry too much about it I'm going to open up the Nanoleaf app on my phone and we're going to get this light strip paired so I'm going to start with uh, tapping the edit button and I'm going to tap add device here and uh, we're looking for essentials across the top and I'm going to grab the essentials light strip and tap pair on that okay and I'm going to flip over the controller here and I'm going to try the NFC doesn't seem to want to work so I'm going to scan the QR code there and we've got light I'm going to add to home and make sure it stays connected to power and nearby. Okay, so now we need to select a light location. I'm going to put this one in the office and I'll tap continue there. And I'm just going to call it a nano leaf light strip, not strips. And we'll tap continue on that. Uh, so uh, let's go with uh, when last person leaves home will turn off uh, and I'll just tap continue on that. Not too worried about any of the other automations and we will uh, tap done on light added to the hive. Uh, so that's added it to our home kit straight out of the box. So we don't need to worry about that. I'll scroll down to office and we see we've got nano leaf light. If I tap on that to open it up, we have our uh, warm white and we can modify that uh, by going over to the cool white. We had cool white and warm white separate LEDs on there. Uh, and as we scroll through the different settings there, I can see the brightness of each of those changing. Uh, so that's pretty nice, uh, but it is across the full strip. So I'm not sure if we're going to get any kind of addressability or any kind of uh, chase scenes there. If I go to the color, I'll grab a red color, uh, a blue color, and a green color. And that's, that's all pretty standard. Um, so red, green, and blue. Um, so those are all pretty standard and looking perfectly fine. And we've got some scenes in here, so I can choose Northern Lights, and that's just going to fade through uh, this kind of rainbow color, and it does appear to be doing that across the full length of the strip, as opposed to being any kind of individually addressable across that strip. I am a little disappointed about for the price of this LED strip, uh, but at the same time, I feel like I can live with it, so uh, I'm not too fussed. Um, so there's a couple of different uh, scenes in here. There's a warm light, there's a reading light, there's daylight, there's a date night, which is kind of a, a slides through some different colors. There's a few different scenes we've got there, and then we've got favorites as an option there as well. If I tap on the edit in the top right corner, we can see we've got power loss recovery. Uh, so like the others, we can restore the last on and off state uh, of the lights before the power loss. So I'll turn that on so that we make sure we recover from any power loss back to the state that we're in. And we've also got identify here. So if I tap the green identify button, the light strip starts flashing there.
Um, I probably wouldn't recommend anyone with photosensitive epilepsy do that uh, because it is quite bright. Uh, if I close out of the Nanoleaf app and go into home, and let me find, uh, we have Office Nano Leaf Light Strip, and we can turn that off and turn that on. Nice and quick response because of the thread compatibility there, and we've got our brightness control. Uh, we can change it to a warm white, cool white. This should be our adaptive lighting where it uh, transitions through cool and warm white, uh, and we can do some different colors there as well change the color or set a temperature there. In the bottom right, we've got our gear icon and we can uh, check that out in here. So we can add this to some scenes. Uh, we've got suggested scenes such as arrive home, good morning, good night, and leave home. Uh, and we've got our status. So we can include that in the home status and we can group it with other accessories. And we've got the manufacturer of the serial number, the model and the firmware. It does say that there is an update available for this accessory. So uh, we should probably apply that using the NanoLeaf app. Uh, so if I tap more, uh, we can see that we have uh, the NanoLeaf light strip and we can update that. So that's the NanoLeaf Essentials light strip. In terms of pros, I think it's a really great turnkey solution and it's got great color output. The thread connectivity makes it super responsive and it's very, very bright. From the cons perspective though, it is pretty expensive for what it is. And I would have expected it to have addressable LEDs for nearly $100. All in all, I don't think it's a bad piece of kit at all. I think it's actually quite nice. And Thread is a very exciting technology that is going to make a huge difference to the smart home in the near future. Obviously, another con that we have with this light strip is that there's currently no native Home Assistant integration. That being said, I'm not too worried about that just yet because I'm anticipating with Home Assistant Yellow and the onboard thread controller in Home Assistant Yellow, we will start to see some more native integrations for the NanoLeaf Essentials devices. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below about these LED strips and about Thread because we will be doing a whole bunch more videos about Thread coming up soon, including a deep dive into what it is and a full introductory video. That's all we have for this video and I do hope that it helped you out in your home automation journey. Be sure to put a comment down below with a home automation idea you'd like to see me cover in a future video. And don't forget to follow Hive Mind Automation on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like. And if you aren't already subscribed, now is a great time to change that. And while you're at it, if you hit the bell icon, you'll also get notified when I release new videos each week. If you're currently looking for a VPN provider, there is an affiliate link in the video description as well to sign up for NordVPN. I recently partnered with NordVPN because they've got the best infrastructure of any of the VPN providers I've looked into. They have a strict no logs policy and servers all over the world with a bunch of different apps for just about every platform, whether it be mobile or desktop so you can protect your personal private information while you browse the web no matter where you are and what platform you're using so get a vpn today and use my link below to sign up for nordvpn lastly if you like what i'm doing here and you want to support the channel but you're not in the market for a vpn there is a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below Contributions that you make through the Buy Me A Coffee link are put towards making more and better content for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.